Hello, welcome to our 13th episode of Tech Talk. I'm Danny Burnett. And I'm Landon. <clears throat> so today on this Tech Talk, we're going to talk about metalworking, but something a little bit different, I guess you would say. So for me and Landon, we travel a lot for work. And in doing so, we see a lot of really cool, unique things and ideas that people have come up with. Um, so for us, as we're going through it, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at techtalk at clingspore.com. So any questions you get throughout, feel free just to reach out to us on it. But um, so today we're going to talk about one of our newest products. It's our NCD 200 HD, and then we're also going to talk about our carbide burr line. So both these right here, they're used to clean up. And uh, first we're going to talk about is our NCD 200 HD. So Landon, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about this new product we've got. Right, so it's just another power wheel, um, and the HD stands for heavy duty, and what that's referring to uh, basically, it's just the density of the wheel itself. So the fiber is a little bit more firm. It's a little bit more put together. Uh, but the, the biggest difference uh, compared to the standard is going to be the type of grain. So this one, um, it will have a ceramic coated aluminum oxide. Um, so with that, you're getting a more durable grain and you're getting more durable fibers. And so that's why we're going to call it the heavy duty. Um, so when we look at it in the video later today, you will see how just effort effortlessly it does remove that paint and rust. Um, and so what you're going to get out of it is just more aggression in general. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also with the grain being different, you're, you're going to get a lot more service life as well. So oh, okay. the wheel's going to last longer and it's going to be more aggressive. So uh, gotcha. we're really happy with it during the video. Awesome. So if you if you we have a photo of this right here. So it's the we have the NCD 200. I'm guessing it's on your left. I'm not really good with the left and right, but you have the NCD 200 and then you have the NCD 200 HD and that's your green one. So the black one right there, that's your silicon carbide. Mm -hmm. So when it's removing that paint and rust, and correct me if I'm wrong, as it's going through it, it's still cleaning up, but it's leaving it with a better finish. So that's just your NCD 200 that we're still going to carry. It just leaves a better finish, but it doesn't do it as fast. That's right. So it's not good. The, the silicon carbide doesn't leave quite as heavy of a scratch. That's one of the differences. Mm -hmm. um, and you also notice with the picture you saw there, it's basically you can consider them the ultimate open coat. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're great for that paint and rust, especially on something like stainless steel. Um, you're removing all that material and it's not gonna load the actual wheel up. So an actual non-woven or uh, some kind of disc like that, that paint's gonna stick to the abrasive. Um, it won't in this case. Oh, okay, and so, yeah, so the, let me get this right. So the NCD 200 HD, that's your aggression, that's a workhorse. Mm -hmm. Whereas the NCD 200, that one's, hey, we're gonna, we're still gonna remove, it's gonna take a little longer, but it's gonna leave a better finish. Right. Correct, right. good deal. <clears throat> so with those right there, you know, we've. With the NCD 200 HD, like I said before, we're going to talk about two different products. So we're also going to talk about the carbide burr. The reasons why we're talking about two different products is because most jobs that you do, it doesn't just take one product right. to do everything. And so for today we're really doing mostly, you know, clean up, whether it's on welding or, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, paint and rust and those kind of things. So when you're looking at these carbide burrs that are about to be flopped up on the picture, I'm so sorry but it's really meant for your fast removal mm -hmm. and whether it's you know aluminum metal steel in those hard to reach areas so that's what it's for so landon tell us a little bit more in detail about our carbide burrs and what these cuts are on them right so the first one and the most common one you're going to see is going to be what we call the double cut and so as you see on the picture just as the name implies it does have two flutes that kind of cross over each other mm -hmm. um, so with that you're going to have more cutting edges um, and it's going to last a lot longer than the other cuts because it has more edges. Um, and it's also going to leave by far the best finish, which you'll also see again on this video we're going to show you today. Um, and again, that's going to be uh, used on pretty much any metal other than your really, really hard metals like cast iron or something like that. You probably want to stay away. So any kind of general um, steel or soft metal, you'd be good to run it on. Okay. Um, the second cut here is going to be the single cut. And again, just as the name implies, it just has the one flute, um, so to speak. And so with this, you're going to be a little bit more aggressive than the double cut, but it's not going to be, um, it's not going to last quite as long. And so some of the applications for the single cut would be um, your harder metals, titanium or some of the cast uh, okay. materials, anything like that. It's going to be great with your single cut. Um, and then the third and final one is what we call the non-ferrous cut. Um, and again, just as the name implies, any kind of soft metal, so copper, brass, nickel, anything like that, you can use it on any soft metals. 
uh, really common in uh, sign shops and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I do want to hit on, if you're working with soft metals, a common thing um, in the industry is to use some kind of lubricant. It kind of okay. just helps um, the, the metal that you're removing fly out so it doesn't get gummed up, stuck into the, the cutting edges. So mm -hmm. it could be any kind of generic oil. Paraffin wax is another really common one. Again, it just kind of helps eject that metal that you're, you're cutting. And okay. it gets out. So with that non-ferrous, you know, you can also do plastic and those as well. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, in the name it does say for non-ferrous, but you do have those other options as well going into the plastic. So the sign shops as well that deal with the plastic, they do have that option for that going on. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so speaking of these, we do have a video on this. And so let's look at it. Today, we are introducing to you the Clinkspore Carbide Burrs. Look no further for unmatched quality and service life for your carbide burrs. Clingsport offers the three most popular cuts and each has their own advantages that we are going to show you in today's video. Before you begin any project, be sure you are using a tool that runs at the correct RPMs. It is important to have the burr rotating before applying to the workpiece to prevent any chipping and breaking. Lastly, let the burr do the work. Very little pressure is required to remove metal with our burrs. First, we have the single cut. It is best suited for heavy removal applications, primarily for stainless steel, hardened steel, and cast iron. Most applications with this cut include deburring, milling, cleaning, and various other aggressive tasks that aim for a good balance of removal and finish. Next, we offer the aggressive and efficient non ferrous cut. This burr is perfect for all of your soft metal and plastic applications. You can easily distinguish these by their wider cut, which is great to prevent loading on non-ferrous metals and plastics. When grinding on soft metals, many users will often apply oils and lubricants, which also help prevent loading. Lastly, we have our most popular and longest lasting carbide burr, which is the double cut. The double cut has the most cutting edges, resulting in longevity and the finest finish. This burr should be your choice for aggressive removal while deburring, cleaning, blending, and finishing. Along with the increased number of cutting edges, there is less vibration, which allows for a smoother and more precise cut. We offer long shank carbide burrs in single and double cut for the hard to reach deburring and cleaning applications. These burrs give you an extension of up to seven inches. Remember, these burrs should be ran at a lower RPM than standard burrs, preferably between 15 and 25,000. Call us today and get your Clean Sport Carbide Burrs. Oh, it's such a great video on those because it shows really your double cut, your single cut, your non ferrous and you know, kind of like I had you touched base on before, our most common one we do sell is that double cut. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you do have that non-ferrous, you know, that goes for really non-ferrous metals and your plastics and those. So those are two big ones right there that we do sell a lot for. But what are these, like, where would you use these at? Like for the double cut, single cut, non-ferrous, for these carbide burrs, like what are the markets for it? So a lot of markets and a lot of them aren't well known, but the first one I want to talk about is a foundry. So anytime you're taking the metal out of these casts, there's always going to be tiny imperfections and stuff that has to be cleaned up or removed. These burrs are, especially the single cut in that case, are perfect for removing those little burrs and imperfections. Mm -hmm. um, another good one is just basically any uh, general fab shop. So if you're altering, shaping, cutting metal, if there's going to be burrs, there's going to be a market for um, our carbide burrs as well. Mm -hmm. Another one, um, aerospace. It's not maybe not quite as common, but the shops that are working on airspace uh, parts and tools, mm -hmm. uh, big market for those. And then last one is just shipyards. Okay. Uh, so depending on the region you're in, shipyards are another one that are, are working on boats in general or is another big market. Gotcha. So for both the ones we've talked about, you know, with the NCD 200 HD and then carbide burst, both of these are really good for cleanup when you say like that's what they're mostly used for. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, so you know, for the NCD 200 HD, that one's for cleaning up your rust, your paint, and really taking that down. Whereas your carbide burrs, it's actually doing metal removal, so it's cleaning up those burrs. Are really, for what we're about to show a video on, we're actually going to get into some welds and get into those tight areas. But when we're looking at 
just really carbon by birds, you know, from what you talked about, also getting into those really hard to reach areas, not just like on piping and stuff, but really like your 90 degree corners and those kind of things. So we've got a video that we actually did an application on uh, where we were working with some railing. And so here's a video, take a look. Welcome to another episode of Metalworking. I'm Danny Burnett. And I'm Landon Eisenhower. So today we're gonna to talk about rail working. So for us, we travel a whole lot for work. And one of the big questions we get is what's a better way to clean up some of these welds that are on the rail and how do you strip the paint on those? So for this right here, we actually have this really not nice looking rail. And so today we're gonna to clean these up. We're using a carbide burr to do that. And after we get that carbide burr in there and clean up all these welds, we're gonna strip all this paint off of it. If it does get painted again, it'll look a lot more professional than this does. So first we're going with the carbide burr. Landon, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is an SC shaped burr, um, just a cylindrical end shape. We did go with it on the, the smaller end a little bit, just so it kind of fits in these corner welds um, and doesn't dig into the workpiece on the sides here. Um, and also it is a double cut, meaning it has more flutes and it's gonna last the longest and it's gonna leave the best finish by far. So once we do remove these corner welds, there's not gonna be a lot of work and prep work that needs to be done um, before you repaint it or whatever the case may be there. Okay, so our whole point is to get this to look nice, neat, and uniform. Mm -hmm. So may as well, let's just get at it. Let's do it. All right. So as you can see, we got these welds taken down that look really nice and uniform. So that carbide burr really took those down. It actually took them down really fast. Look at the finish. Oh yeah, man. Finish looks really good. So everything's working out on this, but we've got another issue. We've got to take this paint off of it. So our next product we're going to talk about is our NCD 200 HD. So this is a ceramic disc and tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so it's our new power wheel here at Clean Spore. Um, it's our newest item and it's a little bit different. So, so most of the power wheels in the industry are made with a silicon carbide grain with a little bit more emphasis on the finished look. This one's a little different. It's made with a ceramic grain. Um, so it's gonna be compressed on fibers, a resin, and then lastly, that ceramic grain. So what that ceramic's gonna do for you, um, it's just gonna make it much more heavy duty. So you're gonna get more service life out of it. It's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. Um, and any applications, it could include uh, removing paint, which we're gonna do here today, removing rust, mill scale, any kind of general cleaning and blending. Today, like I said, we're gonna move some paint you're gonna to get to see just how efficient and effective this wheel is. Good deal, let's get at it. My big thing for this video is I wanna show how really good the carbide burrs did. So once we got all this paint removed, you can see that the carbide burrs looked really good. And so it's the reason why we did the carbide burrs first, so if it had a scratch, and then obviously the NCD 200 HD came in and took out the uh, paint. So for me, the carbide burrs did an excellent job and it was relatively fast, so that really helped out. So I had two main takeaways. It was just uh, the time you saved with that ceramic, you can, you can see the aggression a little bit more mm -hmm. compared to just an industry standard. And also the finish it leaves. So it being a ceramic, you would think um, it would leave a heavier scratch. It's not the case. It's pretty much in line with um, some of the silicon carbide power wheels. So you can see it's a pretty good finish there. Okay. Um, so paint's gone, weld's gone. It's all polished up. Sounds good. All right, so 
that is it for this video today. So our whole goal was to emphasize carbide burrs and emphasize our new NCD 200 HD, which is out now, and just kind of show what it does on something we get a lot of questions on. Different ideas for taking down welds and removing on a rail. So thank you so much and see you next time. Such a great video. So actually the cool thing about this video, this is the first look for it. So no one else has ever seen this video before. So after this, it will be aired. So just give me a heads up. If you want to watch it again, feel free to hop on Instagram. It'll be on it. But um, a big thing for this video is the things I took away from it is carbide burrs and how pretty much they're versatile. Like you can use them on small welds. You can use them just to deburr things. Like it's just such a versatile, I don't even know if that's the right word, but such a great component to have. And for any metal shop to have those just kind of in your arsenal, for any of those times you have to do that cleanup. So that's just a big part to it. Um, what did you take away from it? Just the NCD 200, uh, the HD, it just took away the, the paint very efficiently with no pressure. Um, so that's the thing about this wheel. If you use the correct amount of pressure, if you're using the wheel correctly, mm -hmm. um, it will last forever. So that's one thing I do want to hit on it. It will last much longer. And then secondly, how it didn't shape or change the, um, the shape of the railing at all. So it's, it, you could see in the video, it was a really good finish. Mm -hmm. um, and then going on, if you were to, um, your next step, that would leave you very little to do in terms of leaving a better finish than the power wheel did. Oh yeah, so everything, everything for that in that video worked out really well. So huge fan of that. Uh, feel free to check it back out again on Instagram. Um, but so promos, what do we got going on? So to kind of think of our thank our customers, we are coming out with an all new bulk pricing for the whole month of February. So it's going to go until um, February the twenty eighth. And so what that's going to be is if you purchase uh, one to three burrs, you're going to get thirty five percent off. Um, if you buy four to six burrs, it's going to be 40% off. If you buy seven to nine burrs, it's going to be 45% off. And then if you purchase 10 or more burrs, all burr sales will be 50% uh, off. So it's a really good deal. You should come check us out. Yeah, that'd be a good time to stock up on those, especially with such a great deal going for it. That'd be, that'd be something huge. And like I'm saying, if you, you know, for any metal shop, this is just something great to have in your back pocket mm -hmm. just in case you ever do need to use that for a cleanup so Everything. definitely do take take big advantage of that uh, promo but so for all our viewers out there if you've got any questions you want to reach out to us please email us at tech talk at cleansport.com and <clears throat> i guess it's time to get to the questions and answers Good. all right so we have a question from david david asks what grit is the ncd 200 hd Okay, so the, the power wheels aren't really associated with a grit, so to speak. They're more of a density that the fibers are. Mm -hmm. The current one, um, I guess most of the industry standard would be a coarse. The heavy duty, which we've been talking about all day, is the extra coarse version. And so it's not really associated with the grit or a larger grit. It's just going to be a more firm wheel. And this one happens to have a ceramic grain in it. So okay. a little different. Gotcha. Okay. And so the second question is going to be from Hulk. And is there another option to be able to get into these smaller areas to take down welds? That's a great question, Hawk. Uh, so for these right here, um, we do have file belts that are going into it. So in that video, as you've seen, you know, doing the carbide burrs, it is a great option for it. But, you know, you've got file belts. You've got our, Q, our QDCs, which is your quick mm -hmm. disconnect, which does such a great job getting into it. But there are other different options. For me, if I wasn't using a carbide burr, I probably would go with that file belt because it's able to kind of get into those really tight corners and tight spaces as well. All right. Um, question in from Clayton. I buy a ton of burrs. What can I do to make sure I'm getting the most out of my burrs? Okay. Uh, so if you're burning through burrs, there's probably a couple options starting with the quality going all the way to um, just user error. So the first one is going to be the quality of the actual carbide that you're cutting with. There's mm -hmm. tons of different ones, depending on where you purchase them. I will say clean spore burrs, they are top notch. Uh, so you get what you pay for kind of thing. Uh, so carbide being a big one. The second one is the braze, which actually joins the steel shank to the, the um, carbide head. Depending on the quality of that braze, um, whether the heat build up, the pressure applied, all that's gonna take a toll on that braze. So 
the worse the braze, the better chance you have a the defective burr. Gotcha. Um, so the second one's going to be your RPMs. So we rate ours usually 25 to 30,000 RPMs. You'll be fine. Um, anything above that, you're going to be kind of getting into a gray area, too mm -hmm. much pressure, something like that. That could, that could break the head off the burr as well. Um, next, I do want to say you want to let the burr do the work. Uh, we get a lot of calls where people are just really leaning into the burr as they're mm -hmm. trying to remove the corner weld or whatever the case may be. Uh, that, that pressure, which is unneeded, is going to pop the head off as well. Uh, and then lastly, I do want to talk about when working on soft metal, since it is such a big market, I kind of touched earlier. Um, it's best to use an oil of some sorts, because if not, when you're, when you're cutting aluminum, for example, that aluminum will kind of uh, melt itself to the cutting edge of the burr. And at that point, um, the, the cutting edge is pretty much gone. So you'll just be spinning in place. It'll glaze the whole burr over gotcha. pretty much. So just those few steps can, can save you a lot of time and money as far as burrs go. Yeah, okay. All right, the fourth one from Eric, it says, um, where can I find more information? Carbide burrs. Okay, so for this, we actually have a website for it. So you can go to our Cleans4 website, and it actually has a whole page dedicated to carbide burrs. Mm -hmm. And so if you can go to this link, and I honest, uh, so we will put this link also in the comments. So if you want to click on that, you're able to go to it. Other ways to get information is, you know, if you have a local rep in the area, or if you want to call into customer service, we can get a catalog sent out to you. And so that's, we, we do have a ton of ways to be able to look at these carbide burrs. But, so we will put the web page in the actual comment section so that we do have a chance to click on that and go for it. All right. So question from Milan. Can you use the NCD 200 HD for weld removal? Okay, so that would be one of the applications not approved for it. So going back to earlier, if you use the, the power wheel correctly, it will last forever. This would be one of the ways to uh, basically burn the wheel down prematurely. So at most, you want to be doing light deburring. So removing an entire weld would be a little much for it. So just stick with clean up, blending, that kind of thing, and, you, and you'll be really happy with the wheel. Yeah, especially for that one right there. You know, the NC200, the whole point of it is doing that paint and weld removal. Like it's... It's just such a great tool for that. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, if you're looking, if you're trying to go down to, you know, remove welds, we do have our Titan series. We have other things that we can do, but really for the NCD 200 HD, just paint, weld, or not welds, uh, paint and rust removal. That's right. a, Those are two big ones for it. All right, so uh, we have another question in from Philip. What other sizes and shapes do you offer with carbide burrs? Okay, so depending on the application we have, uh, 13 total different shapes. So whether you're working on flat edges or working in contours, we have round burrs. Um, so 13 different shapes, we have hundreds of different sizes. So um, whatever your application is, there's probably a really good, a really good chance we have the shape and size that you need. Um, one thing I also want to hit on, I don't think we've touched today, is we have long shank burrs. Um, so most of your standard burrs will max out at three to three and a half inches. The long shank burrs reach anywhere from seven to seven and a half. So um, if you're working on engines or valves and you need to reach in there and um, remove a weld or clean up anything, the long shank burrs would be a really good option to do that. So it's just, you're able to cover more ground, I guess you could say. Okay. So I do have a question for you on it. Um, so you, we're, um, for this, you, uh, wow. In that photo, you can see you've got a cylindrical no end cut and a cylindrical end cut. When would I want to use an end cut over a no end cut? Okay, I so guess if that makes sense. It does. So if you have an end cut, Anytime the burr is going to come in contact, or any part of the burr that's going to come in contact with metal, you're going to want a cutting edge there. So the, the ones with the end cut, that means they're probably in a 90 degree angle, uh, removing metal or cutting, you'd want um, that end cut. So the, the non-end cut burrs, that would be strictly for flat surfaces because the top of that burr wouldn't be a touching or cutting metal. So. Oh, okay. I understand. All right. Um, so we had another question in from Bob which I know we've already kind of answered this, what markets use the most carbide burrs? So we're talking about ones that do what most, which ones mostly use them? Okay, so yeah, four or five main ones. And again, mm -hmm. the biggest one in my mind is foundries. They mm -hmm. use a ton of them. Also, auto body repair, um, aerospace, shipyards, any kind of manufacturer, general, fab shops, anything like that, they're all going to use the burrs. So. Okay, good deal. And then, so another question in from Steve. Can I have my carbide burrs resharpened like I do my saw blades? So that's a great question. Okay, I guess in, in theory you could. You can, um, anytime there's carbide, there's somebody gonna be willing to try and sharpen it. I will say, unlike saw blades, 
it probably is not the most economical version. Usually by the time you get a, a $15, $20 burr, it wouldn't be in the best interest to ship it off, have it resharpen, and then ship it back to you. So it's possible, but most people don't do it that way. Gotcha. Uh, one thing I do want to jump back into is looking at that promo again. So I want you all to remember we do have that promo going on. So it's a 35% off if you buy one to three burrs, 40% off if you buy four to six burrs, seven to, oh, I'm sorry, 45% uh, off if you buy seven to nine burrs, and then 50% off if you buy 10 or more burrs. So definitely do stock up on that because that that's a really good one. But um, so since there's no more questions on this right here, I want y'all to know we do have another Tech Talk episode coming out February 16th at 3 p.m. So this right here is going to be a Nick DeMars and see who else is doing that one. Nick and Scott's Scott. doing this one. I think so. Scott will be. Yes, yeah, so, so Nick and Scott will be doing this right here. And they're going to be talking about sanding molding. And if you have any questions for us on the metal side or if you have questions ready for them, please email them to techtalk at clingsport.com. And uh, I'm Danny Burnett. And I'm Landon. Thank you.